Hello and welcome again. In our previous tutorial, we were able to work with uh, our contact on the contact page and we were able to create this contact form. And uh, we were also able to work with the Django All Auth uh, library uh, in helping us to authenticate. And in this tutorial, we are going to look at uh, the, uh, the blog page. So far, when you open the blog page, this is what we have. We have an empty page. Uh, just the title and we need it to be showing the blog posts and also show if you want to access a specific blog post you can be able to access it and create it if you want to create delete and also amend or modify or edit an existing blog post so the first step will be installing the django ck editor so this is a, it's a third party library that we normally uh, it's normally used or we normally use it in creating a rich text field for the uh, blog post body. And you can also use it to create the uh, rich text uploading field and the CK editor widget and an upload widget as well. So we'll install this inside our Docker container as a first step. So we'll be using, let me confirm that the Docker containers are running and I can see that they are running and uh, so I'm going to run docker compose uh, exec and uh, the container name, which is web, and then use pnf install the Django CK editor. And the specific version that we are installing is this 6.42. So remember that we are working from within the container. And then after we have uh, installed the editor, we are going to uh, restart the containers and uh, we rebuild the containers. Okay. So let's give it some few moments while it installs the Django CK editor. So after completing it, then we will need to stop our containers using the Docker Compose uh, down. And then we're going to rebuild our containers. Up in a detached mode and then we'll do create a build, perform a build. Okay, so it has been able to rebuild successfully. So I'm just going to clear. And the first step will be adding the CK editor in this third party library. As per the documentation and the installation, you'll see that we have we add the CK editor to the installed app settings. So I'm just going to add this in the settings.py file, uh, just under the all auth that we had uh, used in our previous tutorial. And then the next step will be working on the model. So our blog, whenever a user creates a blog, these blog details need to be saved somewhere. So we will persist these details into the Postgres database. Remember that we are working with, uh, we are working with two, uh, let me run a Docker Compose. We are working with two, uh, two containers and uh, one of them is the, uh, is the database, the Postgres database container. So, Let's uh, go to the blog, uh, blog dot, uh, models.py, sorry. So inside our application, which is a website, we have the models.py. We had created uh, initially uh, one, of the, uh, one of the models, which is the email message. So in this uh, particular case, we'll be creating two more classes, and one of them will be called the blog, blog post. then we, it will uh, inherit the model class, Django model class, models dot model. So this is our first uh, model. And then the other model will be, actually I'll add it on top of this, uh, class uh, blog category, I'll call it blog category. And it will also subclass the model class, the Django model class. Yeah, so these are the two models that we are going to uh, work with in this uh, tutorial for creating or modifying the blog page. And I will also import several settings. So I will import the, the uh, settings from uh, Django. 
Let me show import settings. Uh, I'll show you why we are importing this in a bit. And then we're going to import the time zone since we'll be using the time zone. So from Django, uh, from Django Utilities, we're going to import the time zone. And then we're also going to import the reverse, which you'll also see the, its use uh, from Django URLs. So we are going to be using it. We're going to see the its work. So we'll also import from the CK editor uh, fields. We're going to import what you call the rich text field. Okay. So these libraries, as you can see, they are grayed out because you have not uh, used them. So I will begin with the blog uh, post. And uh, inside the blog post, we'll have the uh, field that I'll call ID, uh, which will be equal to the to a UUID field. And I'll explain why we're using the UUID uh, later. So we have the primary key. Uh, the UUID is unique, so it will be uh, our primary key in this case. But remember that there is still a, an ID field that is normally created by Django, whether you specify it here or not. Uh, it normally creates a primary key uh, by default. So we have uh, the default, which is the UUID. Uh, we'll be using UUID version 4. And uh, this field, uh, we are enforcing that it's not, it cannot be edited. It cannot be edited. And then uh, let's just edit it. The second field uh, will be status choices. Uh, this one is normally used for uh, specifying whether the the blog post is a draft or is a it's a published. So I'm going to set it out here. So we have uh, this is a tuple. Uh, the blog post can either be a draft or uh, published. So this it specifies whether the field is uh, the Django, ah, it's not Django, but it states whether the post is uh, published or it's uh, in the draft state. So we'll also have the title, and the title of our blog will be a character field. So the character field will contain a maximum length of uh, 100 uh, characters. And then we will create the author. Uh, the blog post needs to have an author. So this will be a foreign key. And uh, we are going to, this is where we are going to use these uh, settings we have already Oh, we had forgotten to import the UUID, but PyCharm uh, has imported this for us automatically. Uh, so UUID is contained in the Python standard library. Come see this sheet with Python standard library. So we are going to add the settings dot uh, user model. And then we have the on delete field. So we'll just add models dot Scale. and then I'm also going to put this in a new line so that it looks neat and it and then we are going to add a new uh, another field here which I'll call the header image uh, which will be equal to an image field uh, so the image field for well, now I'll set it uh, null is equals to true and uh, blank is equals to false. So the null field is a database field. So uh, it cannot be blank. So whenever we are creating a blog, we must we must uh, attach a header image into it. And then we have where are we going to upload it to? For now, I'm just going to add a direct uh, path that is uh, called images. Uh, however, for this one, I'll 
we are not going to use it now i'll just put it inside the comment and then we have the body so this is how we are going to use the rich text field and uh, we can allow it to be blank you cannot i need uh, whenever you create a blog post you need to add the body so i'm going to put it as blank is equals to false then I'll set it as true and for the published so we have three fields here published uh, created and then we have updated if you update blog and uh, yeah so let's work on this field so we have models dot date time this is a date time field and this is why we are importing the time zone up here so inside it we'll have uh the default which will be uh time zone dot now and then that way and then we will uh, let me just copy this because all these are date date time fields and uh, for this one we'll set it to auto now add is equals to true so we, whenever you create a blog post it will update it to the current timestamp and uh on this one we'll have it as auto now is equals to true so whenever you update it then this field will update itself uh, the time it, uh, it has been updated and then finally we'll have what you call the category field which will be also a foreign key that will be referring to the category model uh block category rather And uh, we, we can add uh, some verbose name there. Okay, yeah, so this is what we have. Uh, let me put this in. Uh, but for consistency, let me just put them in a single quote. Yeah, so we have been able to create our blog posts which has the id status uh, choice field and uh, this status choices field we need to set the blog status i've forgotten to add the field so the status will be equal to the status choice so this will be equal to the models models dot character it will be a character field and uh, we can add we can create a maximum length uh, for this one i can just set it to be 50 and uh, choices uh, which will be the set of choices so the user can select you can set the blog post to be either draft or or published and the default will be a draft it's necessary to add a default so that we do not have uh, ambiguity and then we have the blog category so the category will contain a created field so when was when we, uh, when the category was created and we'll have these as auto now add is equals to two and then we'll set we'll also have updated just like we had in the blog post so so a date time field and we are going to add uh, some a boss name and we'll set it to at uh, to be created at And then we'll also have the 
Oh, I forgot to add this created that should actually be in the first field that we created here. And for the updated, we'll have the auto now to be equal to true. The verbose, its verbose name will be created at, and then we'll have the block, uh, the category title rather. So it will be a, a character field as well. And uh, we'll limit this to, let's say, 100 characters. And then we'll have the verbose name uh, to be called to the title. Yeah, and then we will create, uh, we will modify some parameters of this uh, model and how it appears to the, the user. So we'll have our boss name for this, which will be equal to category. And then you can also add another additional parameter, which is the verbose plural name. So whenever the, the mini then we have categories. And then we can also configure, we can also uh, set the ordering. So it will arrange this uh, using the title. Title field. So it will be not sure if it is a, an ascending or a descending order, alphabetical order. So that's why we have these uh, minus. So I believe it will be in a descending order. So we have been able to successfully create the blog and the blog uh, category. Uh, one of the things that I have not added, I think, in either of the fields is the uh, Tree, uh, the however, how they appear in the admin. So instead of having object one, object two, so we'll add the we'll set it to return uh, self dot title. So the blog self dot title, and for the blog posts, I think we can set it also to do the same. I'll return self dot title. Yeah, so the other thing that we are going to add, there is one thing we have left, which is reverse. So I will create the get absolute uh, URL. And this one will return a reverse. And I think we can call this a blog, uh, blog article. And uh, it will we'll have some arguments. We'll see where this one comes in handy when we are working in the, we are configuring our, or we are setting up the template. So we'll have self.id. So I believe we have been able to set up the models. So I'm going to push these in the repository. So GitHub repository so that you can make reference to it. So uh, there's also something else I have not added. And uh, for these arguments, I think I should set these on the string because you're going to be using these in the, in the template, in the HTML. So we need to set it so that we do not have it as a integer or as a long number. So we will uh, add the... Yeah, we have configured the self dot title. I'm just doing a check. And then for this one, I think we can also set an ordering using the meta class. Ordering, which will be equals to the uh, to the uh, when the timer that it was uh, arranged by in you know, ascending order when it was created. So we have been able to successfully create our uh, two models and the models are the blog post and the category. 
a block category and so after we are, whenever you modify or create your models you will run the command or uh, making migrations uh, docker compose uh, exec a web which is a container and then we will run python manage.py uh, make migrations uh, one thing i want us to look at you see inside the migrations you only have this 001 initial so let's see what we are going to do you can also add the app name if you have multiple applications you can specify the app name then django will do the rest yeah so we seem to have a problem uh, missing one required position argument in on delete so let's go back to the models in line 52 okay so i can set on delete equals to models cascade so you can also restrict so whenever you uh, delete uh, this is a setting that is required in the when you say uh, you have configured the foreign key so you can refer to the django documentation on the models uh, what happens when you delete the models we have cascade we have the restrict and whatnots but we are not going to get into their details so let's try and uh, make migrations yeah so it has created two models the block category and the blog post and you will see now we have a second migration file here which has all the details that we have uh, created so the other thing is to migrate do a migrate which will update the effect it into the database so we have been able to create our model uh, so uh, in the next tutorial we are going to see how we can we are going to work on the views and the urls for the our blog and possibly the templates so if you like my video uh click on the like button uh, share this video and you can also subscribe to my channel for more content and don't forget to click the bell icon uh, so that whenever i create a new content you can be able to uh, receive a notification or you can be the first to know so thank you for watching